Good day. Welcome to the Great White North, where things are a bit concerningly not as white as they should be for this time of year. Whether you're a hobbyist photographer, a dedicated content creator, or a professional cinematographer, rising resolutions and ballooning bit rates are likely making the storage and management of all your valuable data quite a challenge. In this video, we'll explore everything it took to get a NAS or a network attached storage array ready for 4K video editing. I'll also share a few thoughts and choices that I made and why said choices may or may not be right for you. Whether or not a NAS is right for you, I would argue comes down to three questions. The first is, do you regularly create large amounts of data? The second question is, do you value that data? Would you cry yourself to sleep if you lost some of it? The third question is, do you need blazing fast read write speed to all of your data all the time? If you answered yes to maybe two of those questions, a NAS is probably right for you. Before jumping any further, this video is a huge departure for everything I've done in the past because it is quite cold and I can't get a NAS to work off the AC power of my truck. So I'm headed indoors and I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's November 2nd, 2008. I am in tears after having a 160 gigabyte IDE hard drive fail, taking a few thousand of my photos along with it. In my sorrow though, I vowed to never lose a single photo to hard drive failure again, and promptly ordered a flashy new direct attached storage array that promised to simplify redundant data storage. And for the next 15 years, this second generation 4-bay Drobo did exactly that. The turtleneckers of the day had successfully sold Firewire to the world, and this early Drobo proudly sported both USB 2 and Firewire 800. Significant as the latter claimed to support speeds upwards of 800 megabits per second, nearly twice the measly 480 of USB 2. In reality, Firewire 800 on this Drobo rarely exceeded 500 megabits per second, and usually sat somewhere around 300. Impressive for 2008, inadequate for modern video editing needs. I willfully ignored the dismal connectivity speeds of the Drobo and quickly came to appreciate its beyond RAID technology that allowed for a mixing of hard drive speeds, capacities, and manufacturers. In fact, I found the reliability and ease of use so attractive that I quickly purchased a second, second generation 4-bay Drobo not long after the first. For the next 15 years, I gradually increased the capacity of each when required, and they worked flawlessly. As I sit in this office and think about the kit around me, as well as the rest of the household appliances, I can't think of many items that can claim to have gone without issue for 15 years. However, my relatively positive experience with Drobo is not collectively shared by all who jumped on the glossy black box bandwagon. There have been countless stories since Drobo's inception detailing unreliable hardware, lackluster customer support, and a general unhappiness with the product. More recently, the supply chain shortages associated with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic have led to the demise of Drobo as a company, with Chapter 11 bankruptcy being filed in California court back in June 2022, and Chapter 7 bankruptcy being filed more recently in May 2023. Without the development of new drivers to play nicely with future operating system updates, the Drobo's days are numbered. In fact, in my case, long before the demise of the company, my Drobos have been relegated to archival purposes only, with my workflow revolving around solid state NVMe drives for editing and scratch disk use. Not owning a boat and with no need for an anchor, I began looking for a new data storage solution late last year and found quite a few attractive options. The basic features that I was searching for were direct connectivity to my workstation, speed and performance fast enough for 4K video editing, and eight hard drive bays that would allow me to repurpose the drives for my two four bay Drobos. Rounding out the list of potential candidates, I had the OWC Thunder Bay 8 neck and neck with the Synology DS1821+. The OWC Thunder Bay 8 was a very tempting option, as it is a proper direct attached storage system, or DAS. Right out of the box, it has very fast speed, connectivity, and performance, and can be configured with different flavors of RAID. RAID is a redundant array of independent disks. It's a storage format that sees data spread across multiple disks in one system, with different configurations being expressed with a number, not limited to RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and each configuration offers a different benefit. You can have greater performance, greater tolerance for disk failure, or a combination of everything. The primary benefit that RAID provides to a NAS system is protection against drive failure. There is no ignoring the fact that hard drives do fail, and usually there is little if any warning of a drive's impending doom. 
In a RAID configuration featuring a drive parity, instead of being a catastrophic event with huge amounts of data being lost and tears being shed, a drive failure is simply that. You replace the failed hard drive and no data is lost. A secondary benefit that RAID provides to a NAS system that is particularly attractive to content creators is the consolidation of hard drives into a single disk image. You plug a NAS into your workstation, and instead of seeing 8, 10, 12 individual hard drives, you see one very large disk image. As someone who has multiple hard drives on their motherboard, I often misplace project files or footage. I lose track of which hard drive they live on. With one single disk image, it's a lot easier to keep track of all of your data. Where the OWC Thunder Bay 8 falls short, in my opinion, is its reliance on soft RAID and the associated subscription renewal costs. But more significantly is the lack of easy upgradability. The hard drives that you use when you're initially configuring your RAID disk image are the drives that you are stuck with. There is no simple means of incrementally increasing the capacity as you slowly run out of space. Ignoring the manufactured options just for a moment, there will be those of you who undoubtedly argue that investing in any pre-built DAS or NAS is a complete waste of time and the logical alternative is using a JBOD running TrueNAS with RAID 5. And yes, this really is a solution that I spent a lot of time looking into, then came to the realization that configuring a JBOD, learning the ins and outs of TrueNAS and troubleshooting anything else I may encounter is simply something I don't have time for. I wanted an easy solution that required minimal setup. As mentioned previously, my experience with Drobo's Beyond RAID technology made me greatly appreciate the ability to mix drives. And this is where Synology's Hybrid RAID, or SHR, caught my eye. The SHR available on the DS1821 Plus is very much like that of the Drobo, allowing you to mix drives. Again, speed, size, and capacity. This is very beneficial for someone like myself. It requires less of a financial investment up front, and instead allows you to incrementally increase the capacity of your storage device when needed, when funds become available and when you run out of space. For a quick comparison, let's pretend that you have both the Thunder Bay 8 and the DS1821 Plus side by side. And upon initial setup, you install six 10 terabyte hard drives into both devices. The Thunder Bay 8 is configured with RAID 5, and the DS1821 Plus is configured with SHR, giving both devices 50 terabytes of usable storage. Two years pass, and you have unexpectedly documented a gender reveal, a bachelor party, and a wedding for a cousin, all in that order. Both devices are now full. Upgrading is as easy as installing a new hard drive. So you populate the two unoccupied drive bays of both devices with 16 terabyte drives. However, with the Thunder Bay 8, you're unable to expand the existing disk image, so you must create a new one. Unfortunately, you can't use RAID 5 again because you only have two drives. You must use RAID 1 to retain disk failure protection, which gives you 66 terabytes of usable storage across two volumes. Not exactly ideal. Whereas with the DS1821 Plus and its SHR technology, the two new 16 terabyte drives are added to the existing drive image giving you 76 terabytes of usable storage. Two more years pass and you capture three more gender reveals for that cousin of yours. Both devices are full once again. For the Thunder Bay 8, that's the end of the line. You cannot expand the capacity of that device any further. You must buy a second DAS and more hard drives. With the DS1821 Plus, you're able to replace smaller hard drives with larger hard drives. So those 10 terabyte hard drives, you can replace all but one of them with more 16 terabyte hard drives, which gives you 104 terabytes of usable storage space. At this point, you might be questioning the math. The DS1821 Plus, it limits the size of a disk image to 104 terabytes. So even if you had eight 16 terabyte hard drives, which theoretically should give you 112 terabytes of usable storage, you'd still be stuck at that 104 terabyte cap. It's also worth mentioning that the replacement process, you can't replace all of the smaller hard drives with larger hard drives all at once. It is an incremental process, one by one. You have to let the operating system of the NAS spread the data across the new hard drive, and it is not a fast process. My decision, it's a bit obvious. It's in the title of the video, it's behind me on the desk. I purchased the Synology DS1821+. Plus. However, on paper, this is not the clear cut winner as out of the box, it is not well suited for 4K video editing. But with a few significant upgrades, it has been handling the task very well for the past few months of use. It's even been tackling some raw 8K video as well. 
out of the box, one of the most obvious shortcomings of the DS1821 Plus is its gigabit network connectivity that sees speeds of 1000 megabits per second or 125 megabytes per second, not fast enough for 4K video editing. To speed things up, you'll want to invest in 10 gigabit network infrastructure. That means putting a 10 gigabit network card in both your NAS and whatever you're connecting it to, likely your computer slash workstation. To install a 10 gigabit network card into your 21 plus series Synology NAS, you'll begin by removing the screws from the back of the device. For this DS1821 plus, there are six. With the screws gone, remove the shroud by pulling upwards and outwards from the rear. Locate the open PCI slot and unscrew its associated rear slot cover. Insert the new 10 gigabit network card into the PCI slot and secure it in place by screwing closed the rear slot cover. When I first began using the DS1821 Plus, it was paired with a workstation built on Intel's X299 chipset. And with Synology's very own 10 gigabit network card in the primary PCI slot of the motherboard, bifurcation of the PCI channels saw read speeds limited to about 500 megabytes per second. Fast, but not fast enough for 4K video editing without significant stuttering during playback. Now, this NAS is connected to a workstation built on the Intel Z790 chipset with onboard 10 gigabit. Things are much faster. Read speeds are about 1200 megabytes per second. Write speeds are 900 megabytes per second. Very fast, adequate for 4K editing. And the lesson learned here is you can't simply install a 10 gigabit network card into a workstation and assume you'll receive blazing fast connectivity speeds. It's also important to consider what you're using to connect your NAS to your workstation, what that physical connection is. Using old school Cat5 or Cat5e, it might get the job done. But with better or faster cabling options costing so little in comparison to other beneficial upgrades, it really is worth investing in something a bit faster. I have found that CAT7 seems to provide the best cost and speed solution, being markedly faster than CAT6 with minimal difference to CAT8. All of the tests that you see over there were conducted using Blackmagic's disk speed test, the 5 gigabyte test, over a 15 foot cable length. If your two devices, your NAS and your workstation are a considerable distance apart, it's probably worth giving up on RJ45 connections and copper altogether, and instead looking at fiber with an SFP plus or FPS, the connection that sounds like sunscreen. The next obvious upgrade is memory. With only four gigabytes installed by default, upgrading the memory will have a big impact on performance. Interestingly, despite Synology listing the maximum supported memory at 32 gigabytes, many users have found that the DS1821 plus will happily accept and utilize 64 gigabytes. Upgrading the memory has the biggest impact on applications running on the DSM operating system of the NAS, but it will also help with read-write speeds of the disk image. Using 10 gigabit network connectivity, no SSD cache, CAT7 cabling, and four gigabytes of memory, read-write speeds are about five to 600 megabytes per second. Increase your memory to 32 gigabytes, and you're sitting at about 1,000 or 1,100 megabytes per second, a notable improvement. When choosing DIMMs or memory modules, you're looking for ECC or error code correcting DIMMs. ECC or error code correction helps prevent data errors. And with regular scrubbing, it can help prevent bit rot. If the term bit rot is new to you, it is a data degradation phenomenon. It occurs on all mass storage, solid state, spinning platters, CDs, DVDs, magnetic tapes, the list goes on. Looking past memory, adding one or two solid state NVMe drives for caching purposes can increase the performance of your DS1821 Plus, just not for video editing. In fact, there is some evidence to show that having a solid state drive for caching purposes can slow and hinder performance when editing videos. But if you don't plan on editing any videos or you'd like to come to your own conclusions, before you head down to your better buy big box computer retailer, pay attention to the solid state drives available. Just as there are 3.5 inch spinning platter hard drives purpose built for NAS usage, there are also solid state drives purpose built for NAS usage. They have a longer read write lifespan. They're going to last longer than something purpose built for an operating system in your workstation. Also take note of what generation drive you're looking to purchase. The DS1821 Plus is a Gen 3 
interface. So there's little point in looking at a Gen 4 or Gen 5 drive when they cost a little bit more. Hopefully it goes without saying that a NAS or a DAS, regardless of what RAID configuration it's running or how new the hard drives may be, it is not a backup solution. You should never have your data in only one location or one format. Practice the 3 two, one strategy, being that you should have three copies of your data in two different locations and one copy should be in a different storage format or storage medium. So two different locations, your neighbor's house, that doesn't count. It's still vulnerable to a natural event that would wipe out all the data. If there's a fire or a flood, it could destroy both your neighbor's house and your house all at once. Think great geographical distances. If you're in Saskatoon, your offsite backup should be in Moose Jaw. If you're in Moose Jaw, offsite should be in Saskatoon. Now different storage format or storage medium means if you have two copies on hard drives, your third copy should be on a magnetic tape or even a DVD or a Blu-ray. Looking at the hardware and overall build quality of the DS1821 Plus, it is a very well built and very well thought out piece of equipment that's been revised over numerous generations. The eight drive bays are toolless when used with three and a half inch drives. You will need a screwdriver if using a smaller two and a half inch drive just to attach it to the sled. All eight of the drive bays have a individual lock and the key would not need a locksmith to duplicate. You could copy this with a 3D printer. I interpret that as it's not a security feature, more so something to prevent an accidental ejection. If you have the device on your desk and you bump it, you don't want a drive bay flying out when it's being operated. Speaking of having the device on your desk, I really do operate my DS1821 Plus on my desk. Granted, here in the Great White North, Gore's inconvenient mercury doesn't climb too high very often, but even on a hot summer's day, the fans of this device are not overly loud. They're not obtrusive. They're also not silent. They're not gonna be the loudest thing in your room. I'm looking at you dual Xeons. What you will hear though is the clicking, the whirring, the spinning of the gang of hard drives when they're working under heavy load. Again, it's not overly loud or obtrusive, but don't expect to record Morgan Freeman's voiceover without some background noise if you're in close proximity to this. When deciding on a NAS to purchase and what hard drives to populate it with, don't ignore the data migration process. You need a means of safely transferring or copying all of your existing data from the original storage location to the NAS. This isn't a big deal if you're splurging and populating the NAS with new hard drives of adequate capacity for all of your existing data. However, if you're on a tight budget and you're planning to repurpose hard drives, things get a bit tricky as you cannot take an existing hard drive and insert it into the NAS and expect to see all of your data. A NAS needs a blank, freshly formatted hard drive to build a new disk image and create a volume. Fortunately, the DS1821 Plus has eight drive bays, and that allows you to be a bit creative with your migration process. To give you some insight into how to creatively migrate your data, I had roughly 27 terabytes of existing data across two Drobos. One Drobo was populated with four four terabyte hard drives, and the second had four eight terabyte hard drives. I started things off by purchasing two new eight terabyte hard drives and creating a 16 terabyte RAID zero volume. This allowed me to transfer the roughly 11 terabytes from my smaller capacity Drobo to the DS1821+. As great as the SHR technology is, it won't allow for hard drives to be added to an existing volume if they are of a smaller capacity than those drives already in said volume. Meaning I could physically move the four four terabyte drives from the smaller capacity Drobo, but would be unable to add them to the existing 16 terabyte RAID zero volume. So I created a 12 terabyte SHR volume on the DS1821 plus. Then I copied the 11 terabytes of data from that 16 terabyte RAID zero volume to the 12 terabyte SHR volume. This allowed me to delete the 16 terabyte RAID zero volume and add those two new eight terabyte drives to the SHR volume, giving me a 24 terabyte disc with 13 terabytes free. With a little over 16 terabytes remaining on the larger capacity Drobo, I moved 13 terabytes to the SHR volume and used a few spare external drives to hold what wouldn't fit. With the larger capacity Drobo's data copied, I could then repurpose its hard drives. This saw the SHR volume of the DS1821 Plus grow to 48 terabytes, and in the process replaced two of the volume's four terabyte hard drives. Rather embarrassingly, the four terabyte hard drives shown on the diagram represent four terabyte Western Digital black drives. As I mentioned, I'm on a budget. 
These drives date back prior to the advent of purpose-built NAS drives, or Western Digital's RED series. So that's before 2012, meaning these hard drives are well overdue for a replacement. Data migration is not a process that doesn't come with risks, and it is something you do not want to undertake unless all of your data is safely and securely backed up somewhere else. Rather ironically, the exact same day that the Synology landed on my doorstep, one of my trusty 4-bay Drobos ran into some serious problems. Fortunately, having two of the exact same devices allowed for the transfer of the set of hard drives from one device to the other. Unfortunately, this revealed that it wasn't a hardware problem, but rather something wrong with the Drobo volume, the disk image. This threw a giant wrench in my migration plan, and ultimately I had to use a Hackintosh to access the disk image and transferred roughly 13 terabytes of data rather painfully across standard gigabit networking. The process took well over two weeks. Having upgraded the memory and the network connectivity, the DS1821 Plus is now ready to behave more like a DAS rather than the NAS that it really is. Removing any intermediary network infrastructure will make the setup or the connection between your workstation and the Synology much simpler. It may also give you slightly quicker performance, and it definitely means that your data is much safer as it's not directly connected to a network. Although I am using the DS1821 Plus more like a DAS, doesn't mean that you need to do the same. And this is somewhere where I believe the DS1821 Plus provides another level of flexibility over a true DAS. Something like the aforementioned OWC Thunder Bay 8. If you have your DS1821 Plus connected to the appropriate network infrastructure, primarily a 10 gigabit switch, multiple users can access the device at once. Though keep in mind, the number of users connected to one device will slow down your connection speeds if performing tasks of equal load. Beyond basic multi-user network access, the DSM operating system of the Synology allows for the setup of virtual machines, active backups, surveillance recordings, offsite file access, and plenty of other features. I certainly am not using my DS1821 Plus to its full potential. However, for my purposes, it is a dream. Coming from Drobos that struggled to perform batch edits on still photos, to the Synology allowing for the edit of 8K raw footage, it is a different world. To wrap things up, a NAS or a DAS is certainly not the right choice for everyone. Firstly, they are not inexpensive. The Synology DS1821 Plus is roughly 1400 Maple Beaver bucks, which is considerably more than what some people are comfortable spending on their actual computer. Secondly, they are big. If you use a laptop or a small form factor, a mini ITX desktop, get used to having a giant black box just dwarf your computer. Thirdly, they don't require rocket appliances to get up and running, but a bit of technical know-how will go a long way. They're not quite as simple as plugging in an external hard drive. Hopefully though, this video does provide a bit of guidance. That all said, there certainly are many reasons why investing in a NAS or a DAS is the right choice for you. And as I mentioned off the top, I think there are three main reasons. The first of which is you need very fast read-write access to your data. Maybe you're doing real-time video editing. Second is you appreciate that drive redundancy, the protection against drive failure. A NAS or a DAS provides incredible peace of mind against just data loss. And lastly is the consolidation of all of your data. If you're someone who has a set of drawers just filled with hard drives and it takes an hour to find one project, a NAS or a DAS will be very appreciated. Uh, speaking of which, I have found the DS1821 Plus to be such a valuable addition to my workflow there's now a DS1621 Plus sitting right beside it. Finally, I do not live in a dark cave filled with multicolor LED lights. Um, I'm just trolling every other person who makes YouTube videos from behind their desk. Hopefully, my next video takes me back outside. Uh, with that, if you have liked this video, if you found it helpful, click like. If you have a question or a comment, put it down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.